Hey everybody and welcome to a new video and today as you can see we are doing another pickups video. I hope you all had a good Memorial Day weekend. Um, this Memorial Day weekend I actually found a new game store. It was a comic book game store but um, they had some pretty decent games in the items there but they were a little bit pricey. Uh, you're seeing the footage here now. I didn't pick up anything from here but I thought I'd include it as in footage but um, anyways let's get to the games. Alright, so we'll take a look at Hook. I saw this for 10 bucks at Half Price Books. So I said, you know what? Why not? You know, I haven't played this game in a long time. And it was actually a really good game. I just never really got into it. I got to the third level and I kind of fell off from the game. But seeing the price that it was, I don't know if it's going like for stupid amounts of money, but the $10 price tag, I said it was worth it. Plus, you know, 10% off with the coupon at Half Price Books. You know, I couldn't pass this one up. But um, let me know what you guys think about Hook. I actually used to own the Sega CD version of it and the Genesis version. I always felt the Super Nintendo version was the best one, but the Sega CD version did have the best sound. <laughs> And next up, we have the Super Combo Pack. Uh, this has a game in it called Savage Rain, which I actually played on Neo Geo X for the first time years ago. And this is one of those 2D fighting games that experiments with jumping in the background. It's actually pretty cool. Has the big sprites and everything like that. It zooms in on characters when they get close to each other. It really feels cinematic and everything. Uh, the game is fun, but still, I haven't found a really good balance with it. So, um, yeah, just going to it, knowing that it's one of those Neo Geo games that has those hard difficulties where the bosses are like, really tough and everybody's tough so try to get good at it and learn your moves in the next game Kazuna encounter super tag battle is pretty much a tag team fighting game uh, you have two characters you pick two characters going to battle once one of those characters loses all their energy um, the match is over so you want to make sure that um, you kind of like strategize between like having your character with the most energy in there to be on the safe side <laughs> Next up, we have Raiden 4, Mikado Remix, or I don't know if they added, if they dropped the Overkill name to it. I guess they did to this version, but anyways, um, Raiden 4 originally came out on the 360, uh, very cool shoot 'em up and then it came out on the PS3, and they called it Overkill on that version. They added some extra features. I'm not sure all what they added to this one yet, because I haven't got that far, but the Raiden games are just a lot of fun. A lot of people may disagree with me about Raiden 5. They didn't like that, the story and all the talking. I love that stuff, you know, and I wish Raiden 4 had, had it as well. But um, people want to concentrate on what they're seeing in the game, and I get it, because it's hard to kind of pay attention to a story while you're playing a shoot 'em up game, like somebody's talking to you, so maybe that got annoying for some people. But still, I still think Raiden 5 is a better game, but Raiden 4 is awesome as well. But uh, I also found out this game actually came out in arcades in Japan back in 2007. I forgot to mention that, but it's more likely that you'll probably get it on a console system. Uh, also, if you want uh, like an in-depth analysis of these type of games, definitely check out Studio Mud Prince's channel. I'll leave a link in the description uh, below or somewhere on top here. Next three games I'm going to talk about briefly. First off, we're going to talk about Dino Strike. This is a rail shooter game. 
um, that it actually is pretty unique. This is up to four players, and it actually has a funny story to it. Uh, Zoo, uh, the company that published this game, was known for like, um, um, not really po like well, publishing good games, but uh, some games, if you really look at them now, they're actually pretty decent, and I think this is one of them. A four-player co-op game, which is cool, has a decent story to it, well, a funny story to it. And then the next one is Pirate's Blast, um, or Pirate Blast, where you pretty much go to an amusement park and um, things are kind of gone awry, so you gotta kind of clear things up with a water hose. This one is actually two players, but I think this is a solid game. And last but not least, um, we have Arcade Shooting Gallery, where it's about two kids that go to a, a carnival and they play these different games, but uh, it's a really good rail shooter game. And, um, well, I couldn't say really good, but you know, rail shooter games are what they are. I mean, they're kind of a lost art these days, so I wanted to kind of talk about these games briefly. But um, if you like what you're seeing here, you might want to pick these up. X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition. I actually traded my buddy Kobe for this. I've been looking for this game for a long time, and it, it was weird because it's one of those games that you know people would think is a bad game because it's a, a, a game based off a movie. But it's actually one of the good ones from what I'm told. Now, I haven't got too much into it yet, but I added it to the collection because I thought it had potential. And like from the reviews I'm seeing of it, I think it's actually going to be a pretty solid game. So looking forward to playing this one. X-Men Destiny was a game that kind of like, I feel like it fell off everybody's radar. I don't really remember them doing any good advertisement for this game. Um, I felt like it was going to play like the X-Men Legends games. So pretty much in this game, depending on how you play the game, um, you, it'll it'll kind of be decided what which, which factor you'll be a part of. Whether you'll be a part of the Brotherhood or you'll be a part of the X-Men. Now, another thing about this game is that um, allegedly the developers... Um, they used the Unreal Engine for this game, Unreal Engine 3 for this game, but they didn't pay for it. So the game was pulled off shelves, and uh, a lot of copies of the game were destroyed pretty much. So um, I'm not saying it's going to be a rare game or anything like that, but that's just kind of like good information to know. Uh, I'll let it be up to you guys to decide if this is a solid game or not. I'm going to play through it a bit, and um, I'll let you guys know what I think about it later. That package, it's meant for Gambit, isn't it? What's it to you? I can take it. And who are you? You don't need to know. Travis Strikes Back No More Heroes Complete Edition. Um, I've never played a No More Heroes game before, so I don't know if this is the best one to start at. But either way, you know, it looks like a cool experience. Um, you guys let me know what you think about the No More Heroes series, because uh, I, I just never got into it. I just didn't really think much of it at the time. But now, I feel like maybe, maybe I could dive into this. Maybe it has something good to offer. I don't know. I'll see. You will decorate my blade. Alright, so Fimble is a game where you play as a Viking trying to stop a Ragnarok from happening. Uh, the game is kind of cool because it plays in a comic book style, so it kind of goes into like certain segments and it, like the way it transitions uh, to the gameplay is pretty cool. Um, also, um, depending on decisions you make in this game, will kind of impact the story at the end of the game, so that's a nice thing to have in the game. But um, I'm still playing through this one, so if you like what you're seeing here, definitely check this one out. <laughs> Nitro Plus Blasters is a 2D fighting game that was released on the PS4 in America, but I picked up the PS3 version because I saw it for so cheap. It was, I think it was like $5, and I said, you know what, let me go ahead and pick this one up. And um, I think it's a solid fighting game, as you can see here. It takes inspiration from games like Arcana Heart, if you guys have played that one, and another one I can't think of right, right now, Aqua Plus something. I don't remember what that game was called. Wait, it was called Aqua Paza Aqua Plus Dream Match. That's the full title of the game I was trying to mention. But anyways, um, Nitro Plus Blasters is their, one of their later releases. And um, it premiered on the PS4. I, the reason I'm bringing it up because I, the PS4 game, I don't know if a lot of people really know about it. And I feel like it's one of those games that will be sought after in the future. So um, if you like fighting games, 2D fighting games like that, uh, you might want to pick this one up. <laughs> Oh, 
So next up we have K's in the Wild Mask. So I had no idea this game existed until my buddy John Houston told me about it. So John, if you're watching, thanks for letting me know about this one, man. Appreciate you. So if you're familiar with playing games like Donkey Kong Country and Klonoa, you'll kind of know what you're getting into here. From the from the get-go, I felt like the, the like just the nostalgia from playing Donkey Kong Country with this one. So like when it comes to getting the lettering and stuff like that, spelling Kaza's name out, uh, getting the, the rubies or whatever they are, jewels or something like that. Um, just really felt reminiscent of that game. So um, you know what I'm going to say. If you like what you're seeing here, you definitely might want to check this one out. I'm having a good time with this one. And next up we have Dolphin Blue. Dolphin Blue is a running gun shooter I've been wanting to play for years. And unfortunately, it was arcade only on this uh, hardware called the Atomus Wave. Uh, at the time, I didn't know how to emulate it properly, so I never really messed with it. But somebody decided to port the game to the Dreamcast. Since the Atomus Wave hardware and the Dreamcast are hardware are very similar, I believe. I'm not really sure if they're the same or not. But um, they ported this over, and now I'm able to play it easily. Now, this is a running gun shooter, uh, very good looking like some of the Metal Slug games. Probably took a lot of inspiration from those games. But man, this game is intense and the music is awesome. It's just a really cool game that a lot of people, like, I wish they got to play this game. But now they're able to. One thing I really like about Dolphin Blue next to, like, other running gun games is that when you get special weapons in those games, if you get killed, you lose the weapon. So sometimes you get a weapon, new weapon immediately, get killed, boom, you lose that weapon. You don't even really get to use it. That's annoying as hell. Dolphin Blue says no way. You get killed, you keep your weapon until it runs out, which is so great. I love that, that they put that in this game. There's not that many weapons to choose from in this game. I think there's like maybe three or four different types. But still, you need those special weapons in this game because enemies are brutal, especially on the last level. But this game is a lot of fun. And I know a lot of people feel like running gun games are like, they just get tiresome after a while. They get boring or whatever like that. But try to get good at them. Like, you know, try to go through them like a, the first level with no losing no lives or something like that. And try to do it the next level and so on. If you can start doing that, then it's definitely worth it. You know what I mean? You won't get bored at all. But anyways, guys, um, hit your Etsy retailer up to see if you can get a physical copy of this game. You know, or you can just burn a copy for your Dreamcast. It plays immediately. So you don't have to worry about any kind of like a boot disc or anything like that. Castlevania Resurrection is a canceled Dreamcast game uh, back in the early 2000s. Uh, from the footage you're seeing here, I had no idea they had this much done for the game. I thought there was only like still pictures of it done, but obviously there was a lot more. And I guess they showed the game at one of the uh, E3 events uh, years ago. But um, this is a canceled game that I think had a lot of potential to be possibly a good game. You know, um, it kind of follow follows the formula from the N64 Castlevania games. So it kind of expands on it. You could play a couple levels that they had, well, not exactly finished, a couple a couple builds, I would say, uh, that they wanted for the game, but ultimately they canceled it. But it's nice to have something like this uh, to be able to play. Honestly, I, I would have rather them just ported this over to the PS2, but I feel like some of the ideas for this game were actually used in Lamenta Innocence. <laughs> Thank 
Uh, next up, we have Tasume Tyson Puzzle. Um, that's what it says on the on the uh, freaking receipt here. So I'm just gonna go off of that, but I can't read any of the title on the game. But this is pretty much a, a, like a puzzle show game. You know, you have a, a live studio audience like cheering you on while you play certain games, and that's all there really is to it. This one was five bucks, so I thought I'd try it out. Now here is Atelier Rorona. Uh, these are pretty cool traditional RPG games, turn-based RPG games, and pretty much I would say, uh, besides the graphical update that they get like every so often, um, these games pretty much stay the same. You know, you know what you're getting when you play these RPGs. Um, you're not going to get like a big story, nothing like that, but you'll get some fun gameplay and maybe some likable characters. Next up is Karos for the Sega Dreamcast. This, I believe, was his last Sega Dreamcast released in Japan. And what you're seeing here that I have is an English reproduction of that game. Um, it's actually somebody translated it in English, so not that you really need an English translated uh, like shoot 'em up game, but still, it's nice to know what's going on with the story and stuff like that. But pretty much, if you play games like Ratterji, which probably a lot of people have not played Ratterji, it is on the, sh the shoot three in one shoot 'em up collection for the Wii, I believe. Uh, you can play the game that way. But anyways, this is kind of like a like a it's not a sequel, but it's just more of like. You can tell it's made by the same developers with the same art style and stuff. But anyways, Kairos for the Sega Dreamcast. Brave Proof is one of those 2D action RPGs that never got released for the PlayStation in America. But somebody actually did a fan translation of it in English. And I got the reproduction here. Uh, I haven't really played too much of this one yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Because I've always wanted to play this game throughout the years. And I feel like this one could have got released in America. But thanks to Sony's strict policy about 2D games... They didn't want to release this one over in America, so uh, it's possible that might have been it. Maybe the publisher or the developer just couldn't afford, didn't think it, there would be any interest in America. But still, either way, happy to finally get this game over here in English. Next up is the Mystic Dragoons. This is the prequel to Legend of Dragoon. No, I'm just kidding, guys. But I had never heard of this game before, so I was like, dude, this is crazy. And uh, somebody gave this an English translation, so I'm looking forward to playing it. Um, it's kind of funny because I've always felt that the golden era of RPGs was pretty much the PS1 era. So uh, getting a lot of these games translated in English is pretty amazing to me. So I look forward to playing this one, trying it out. Next up is the English translation of Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton for the PS1. Uh, it, this is a cute em up shoot 'em up so you, you don't really need English text. But you know if you do want to know the story, because this game is somewhat story driven... Um, it is nice to have the English text for it, but you don't need it at all, but still very cool to have and also you guys need to know that um, Cotton Reboot is actually coming out pretty soon here. It should be available for pre-order on Amazon, so you guys should definitely check that one out Next we have Henry Hatsworth in the Puzzling Adventure I was looking for this game for a long time and I had totally forgot about it But thankfully I found it and I got it for a good deal so this game pretty much utilizes both DS screens, and uh, it, in one screen you're playing an action adventure game, and the other screen you're playing like a Tetris type game. So depending on what you do on the action adventure screen depends on how well you do on the Tetris screen. It's really cool stuff, very unique. A lot of people don't know that the creator of this game actually made uh, not a sequel, but another game similar to it called Monster Tale, which is actually pretty exclusive to America. It only came out in America, but this is the first game I believe the developer made. Um, I forgot what they're called, but somebody in the comment section will remind us what they're called. Anyways, guys, definitely check both of these games out. Very unique, very cool. I'm pretty sure you guys weren't expecting to see these on the list. Pokemon Gold and Silver. My buddy Rolando and his wife gave these to me because they wanted me to get into the Pokemon series. And, you know, 
I never really hated on the Pokemon games. I just didn't understand all the craze for it. But I'm going to dive into these, check them out. Uh, I, I know what you guys are going to say about them. I mean, everybody seems to love Pokemon. So hopefully I'll love it as well. Next up, we have Wonder Boy, Asha, and Monster World. This is a remake of Monster World 4, which came out for the Mega Drive back in the day. And this remake is fantastic. I mean, seriously, they made this game look like a Disney game. I've been following in in games for a while now, and they're putting out really good stuff. A lots of cool remakes of certain games that came out back in the day. Uh, one of them is Ninja Saviors. You know, that's a great game. But going back to um, Wonder Boy, Asha, and Monster World, this game just feels like just something just really nostalgic, very cool, very colorful, a lots of fun. I definitely prefer this one over the original version of the game. I just feel like this is just the way to play the game. Uh, also, if you do decide to pick this game up, it does come with the original game included. So on the Switch version, it's included on the cart. The PS4 version has a code included with it, which I thought was kind of weird. They didn't just put it on the disc, but uh, it is what it is. But anyways, guys, uh, if you like what you're seeing here, definitely check these games out. Um, these games are very reminiscent to games like uh, Zelda 2, but without the frustration. Uh, definitely, you'll have a lot of fun with this one. But anyways, guys, uh, that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Um, pick us videos. Um, whew, fun to put together. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Radical Reggie, and I will see you all later.